You know, I don't think I've ever seen you actually perform any work at all. Black Mesa is a fan-made remake of Valve's 1998 classic shooter Half-Life. I think Half-Life's gameplay still holds up pretty well, but it also focuses heavily on creating an immersive setting, and time hasn't been as kind to some of its simple environments and dated lighting effects, which leave a lot to the imagination. Black Mesa updates these things, along with a bunch of other changes and improvements to completely modernize and reimagine Half-Life, while still remaining faithful to its core aspects, and it managed to pull this off impressively well. It might not be perfect, but I still think it's really good. Valve's 2004 port of Half-Life to the Source engine, Half-Life Source, left a sour taste in a lot of people's mouths because of its lack of improvements and a bunch of bugs that weren't there in the original. And in one of gaming history's most famous fine we'll do it ourselves moments, modders started working on their own projects to create the kind of remake that they felt a classic and influential game like Half-Life really deserved. Two separate unofficial projects sprouted up, but they soon realized that they shared a similar goal. We've got a better chance of survival if we work together. They merged and eventually became the company known as Crowbar Collective. Black Mesa has been around in various forms for a while now. You can still find early trailers and articles that are older than some of the people who have now bought the game. In 2012, it released as a free mod that included all of the Earthbound levels, but the final levels in the Alien World's End were still missing. That same year, Black Mesa got accepted through Steam's Greenlight program, back when that was a thing. And then Valve did something commendable by allowing the game to sell on Steam, so in 2015 it got listed as an early access title. The Zen levels came out in 2019, and the completed game dropped in 2020, shortly followed by a definitive edition which is the version you can buy today. There are some small details added to Black Mesa's story, but the premise is the exact same as Half-Life's. You control Dr. Gordon Freeman, a theoretical physicist who works in a giant underground laboratory called the Black Mesa Research Facility. After a long tram ride, you arrive at the facility and get to explore for a bit. You can talk to the other scientists, press the fire alarm, ruin somebody's lunch, and help a guy wipe his ass. Then you put on Gordon's hazard suit and head down to the test chamber, where you take part in an experiment by pushing an alien sample into a big machine called the anti-mass spectrometer. This accidentally causes a resonance cascade, which is a fancy way of saying that you're in deep shit. The research facility gets severely damaged, and aliens from another dimension start massacring Black Mesa's employees. <laughs> so yeah, not a great day at work so far. The premise is a classic example of a science experiment gone horribly wrong. My god, what have we done? And it's executed really well. As you progress further, the disaster goes from bad to worse to very strange. A group of marines respond to the situation pretty quickly. Soldiers have arrived. They're coming to rescue us. No, they're here to cover up what happened, so they try to kill the aliens and the Black Mesa employees, including Gordon. And eventually, you have to take the fight to the aliens by traveling to their bizarre homeworld Zen. Along the way, you catch brief glimpses of the mysterious G-Man, whose presence indicates that there might be larger forces at play in the whole situation. The premise isn't flawless, though. You might wonder how Gordon, a physicist, can single-handedly outgun marines and killer aliens throughout the course of the game especially when all the other scientists are just running around pissing themselves. But if you can overlook this part, then it's a fun and compelling setup that serves as an interesting backdrop to the game's puzzles and action sequences. And just like in Half-Life, a big part of what makes the story elements so immersive is how they're presented to you. There are no real cutscenes, and this constant level of control makes you feel like you're always part of the action, not just viewing events from the outside as they unfold. Obviously, Black Mesa's graphics are way better than Half-Life's. But what impressed me the most about the visual design in the Earthbound levels was that Crowbar Collective was able to modernize the game while also making a lot of its locations still feel familiar, despite some pretty drastic layout changes. The very first place you visit after the tram ride is a good example. There's way more detail, greatly improved textures and lighting, the room has been expanded and its contents are placed at a different angle. But the two most striking objects in the room, the large map on the wall and the curved desk with a guard behind it, are easily recognizable from the original. There are some exceptions though, like the rocket launch center which is revamped so much that it feels like an entirely new place. The attention to detail is really impressive too, and it shows the amount of work and care that went into designing the game's many locations. Data on a whiteboard, an email on a computer, fictional soda brands, a photo of an employee's wife decorating their desk, and plenty of other little things that make the research facility and its surroundings feel like real believable environments. Oh, and something about pizza. 
these two guys aren't just taking a peaceful nap during their lunch break. There are corpses littered all over the place, NPCs getting killed right in front of you, and other various signs of destruction that add tension as you walk around waiting for the next enemy encounter. And all of the creative sci-fi machinery, evidence of bizarre experiments, and G-Man sightings evoked a pretty strong sense of curiosity from me while I explored. But as much as I like the visuals in the Earthbound levels, the greatest achievement of Black Mesa's art design is without a doubt the Zen levels. I think the quality of the artwork here speaks for itself. Zen received by far the most changes from Half-Life. These final levels of the game were expanded significantly. There's way more ground to cover and way more places to visit. Purists might point out that the developers didn't keep the kind of grotesque look of the original Zen, although you do see some of that in the later levels like Interloper, but I wasn't bothered at all by this, and from a sheer visual design standpoint, I have no major complaints about the Zen levels. They look fucking incredible. The color scheme and visual design change as you progress, and although there are a few repetitive sections within individual levels, this still helps some of the new locations feel fresh as you move forward. Another cool upgrade is the amount of environmental storytelling you run into while exploring. In Half-Life, there were a few corpses wearing hazard suits lying around, but all this really told me was that the scientists had been here before and they probably didn't have a great time. Black Mesa adds more detail to this, which helps ramp up immersion. There are more corpses, and some of them are even zombies. And there's an entire research base and a lot of research equipment scattered around Zen 2. And then in the interloper level, there are a lot of passive Vortigaunts, and you get a better idea of what their roles are in this whole situation. You'll even encounter a Vortigaunt village where they're just trying to hang out, chill, and enjoy life. All very interesting stuff that adds plenty of mystique to the alien world. A lot of the other big changes to Half-Life's visual and sound design are about what you'd expect from a remake like this, and I didn't notice any areas where the developers were lazy or took shortcuts. Weapons sound more realistic, ragdoll physics are greatly enhanced, boss fights appear more cinematic, NPC models have more variety so now there aren't like two dozen Albert Einsteins hanging around, and the NPC dialogue is expanded and altered. Those TPS reports have gotten progressively worse. We're going to need you to come in this weekend. And you'll notice Crowbar Collective tweaked some stuff to fit what Half-Life 2 retconned, like when you see Dr. Vance and Dr. Kleiner at the beginning of the game. Combat effects were overhauled, and one of the coolest parts of the game is what exploding enemies look like. The aliens vs. marine fights are also way more intense. They look like proper battles, and if you pick the right moment to engage them, you can get some pretty satisfying results. The game has a great soundtrack, composed by Joel Nielsen but I didn't really like how it was used in a few parts of the game like during certain combat scenarios. Gunfights against marines in open areas can get pretty chaotic. They'll attack you from several different directions, they're brutally accurate, and you might have to deal with turrets, exploding grenades, or even tanks. And sometimes when the upbeat, not very subtle music started thumping in my ears, it got pretty distracting. And there are times outside of combat when it just doesn't seem to gel well with the environment or what's going on around you. You can lower the music volume or turn it off in the audio settings, but the problem with this is that there are other parts of the game where the music fits really well and enhances the tone and atmosphere. So unless you've played Black Mesa before and don't mind stopping to adjust the audio settings at certain places, you kind of have to pick your poison here. Put up with the intrusive music segments if you're bothered by them, or go with silence or very low volume and miss out on some of the soundtrack's cooler moments. I'd recommend leaving it on though because I enjoyed it more often than I didn't, especially in the Zen levels. Black Mesa's 18 levels are strung together seamlessly without time skips or jumps to new areas that you haven't traveled to yourself which makes your progress really feel earned and rewarding since you're controlling Gordon every step of the way. The only exception to this is the apprehension level where Gordon gets captured by some genius marines who decide to reenact Star Wars and dump him into a trash compactor instead of just shooting him. And yeah, there are teleport machines, but they're part of the setting. There's no Gordon takes a nap, then a month goes by, and you're in a new country and a bunch of story stuff has changed. It's all one big cohesive mission, and your role as the player during this is very straightforward. Make it to the next objective location by killing marines and anything that looks mean and ugly, and solve any puzzles that block your path. 
It's very linear, but it's not a simple walk in the park. Sometimes the combat will really test your skills, and although most of the puzzles are pretty simple, there are a couple that might make you scratch your head at first. You get all of the same weapons that you did in Half-Life, although there are a few differences. You can chuck flares at enemies and watch them burn to death. These were originally supposed to have been in Half-Life, but they were cut from the game, and didn't show up as a usable weapon until Half-Life 2 Episode 1. Flares are really only useful at the very beginning of Black Mesa, but they still make those early stages of the game, when the aliens first attack, a bit more fun. A lot of the weapons have their maximum ammo capacity reduced. This wasn't a huge deal because ammo usually isn't all that scarce, but it's still wise to keep an eye on your explosives and magnum and crossbow ammo. Iron sights were added to the magnum, but I rarely use this because most of the time aiming felt too slow, especially when a marine is shooting you in the face. They also added in the ability to roll grenades, which makes them more accurate if you time it right. The snark's idle animation is pretty awesome, and Gordon must have played college baseball or something because he hurls these things rapid fire at like 100 miles an hour. The MP5's grenade launcher makes it easily one of the most useful weapons in the game, but I never really liked using its primary fire in Half-Life, and I'm not a big fan of it in Black Mesa either, because it seemed like I spent more time reloading than actually shooting. I preferred the deadlier weapons with more firepower. Landing shots with the magnum or even the crossbow and then demolishing enemies with the shotgun during close encounters felt way more satisfying. There are times when the MP5 is still a crucial weapon though because it's accurate while you're on the move, which along with its high rate of fire is really helpful in some situations, and you find ammo for it literally everywhere. The biggest change to how you use Gordon's loadout is that there are way more opportunities to use some of the alien weapons, mostly in the Zen levels. The Gauss gun and the Gluon gun were in Half-Life, but you could never find much ammo for them. You put in a lot of mileage with the Gluon gun in Black Mesa Zen, and it's an absolute beast. There are recharging crystals that give you infinite ammo whenever you're standing near them, which I think were a cool addition that do a decent job at patching up one of Half-Life's shortcomings. The Marines are Gordon's main challenge during the Earthbound levels. They're tough and they operate in groups. If they're feeling extra friendly, they'll bring along a tank or a helicopter too. Unlike Half-Life where they had to stand still to attack, they can shoot while moving in Black Mesa. They're faster too and seemed more accurate. Your difficulty setting obviously factors into how hard they are to fight. On the middle setting, most of the time they weren't too much trouble when I found them in medium-sized rooms or smaller confined areas. Things were harder in some of the big open areas. Their accuracy with the MP5, even at long range, is borderline incredible, and they have no trouble spotting you from a distance. You have to think quickly if you want any hope of taking them on strategically, or you can just throw caution to the wind and try to hit your shots while looking for cover. It was a little overwhelming at first. I played most of these segments several times, mainly to try and get footage where I didn't look like complete garbage, and I learned to appreciate these areas a lot more once I got a better idea of enemy locations and cover spots. Unleashing some successful carnage during these big battles can be one of the most rewarding experiences in the game. And something that helps out a lot is that Gordon is pretty tanky, especially when you have his hazard suit charged. Healing stations and health items are pretty easy to find too, so even though you might have to use a lot of ammo and take a lot of damage during some of the bigger fights, your chances of staying alive are actually still pretty decent. The source engine physics used in Black Mesa are like what you see in Half-Life 2. You're given a lot of ways to interact with the environment which allows for more puzzle diversity and complexity. And for some of this. You'll use plugs, locate missing valves before using them, and if you're brave enough you can grab turrets or just whack them with your crowbar. You can also carry and throw most of the items that were added in for visual detail, which sometimes lets you come up with creative solutions to an obstacle, like feeding a barrel to a barnacle to make it retract out of your way. The occasional platforming is still around in the earthbound levels and so are laser obstacles, which sometimes get a little crazy. Crowbar Collective significantly altered the pacing and length of some of the earthbound levels. In Half-Life the level on a rail had you spend chunks of time riding rail carts through a large underground transit system to try and reach a satellite rocket and launch it into orbit, which is supposed to help stop the Zen aliens from attacking. This was one of Half-Life's least popular levels. It got criticized by some people for being confusing, tedious, and too long, so Black Mesa made it much shorter and much more straightforward. I never had a huge problem with the Half-Life version though. Just driving the rail cart was kind of lame in some places, but there were also a bunch of side areas where you could get off and take out marines and aliens who were waiting to attack you up ahead. Then you got to go on a gratifying victory ride past the bloodbath that you just caused, and I never really thought the level's layout was too confusing. But I do agree that it seemed to drag on for a little too long, so I don't mind that they shortened it, and they kept in the glory death rides so no complaints there. If you do prefer the length of the original, there's an uncut version in the Steam Workshop. A lot of the areas in questionable ethics were expanded, and the level changes from one that was dense with combat and Half-Life to one that focuses more on exploration and immersion. 
I always thought that the lab areas here were some of the most interesting places in Half-Life because they gave you a much better idea of what the scientists were really up to. So I like that they decided to expand on this, since it lets the gravity of what was going on here really sink in, even though it alters the pacing compared to the original. The jump from being a shooter to basically a platformer in Half-Life Zen was a weird adjustment to make, and it's weird in Black Mesa too, but the transition seemed smoother because the opening areas were so captivating that I didn't think about it as much. The main thrill of Zen is exploring the alien world. The visuals were usually so good that I could have spent the first hour just mindlessly swinging my crowbar at thin air, and I probably still would have had a good time. But after a while, my awe of the art design started to wear off a bit, and I began to focus more on the actual gameplay. The first level makes heavy use of the long jump ability that Gordon gains right before entering Zen. The platforming segments felt like they utilized this well thanks to some smart level design that really made me feel like I was flying around the map. The Gonark fight went from being a short, basic boss fight to a long drawn out battle of attrition, where you chase each other around through a bunch of different areas. It's intense and terrifying and has some really cool moments. I definitely think lengthening this fight was a good idea because it was underwhelming and too easy in Half-Life, but I think they kind of overdid it. After shooting this thing with like two dozen rockets, the only thought going through my head was WHY WON'T YOU DIE?! And I found myself just wishing it would end. Apparently there's an alternative way to win this fight that involves carrying a gas canister with you on Zen and then using it to kill Gonark. Interloper starts out great with its environmental storytelling, and the giant factory was sometimes a really fascinating place to explore. I didn't really have a problem with this level the first time I played it because I knew I was close to the end of the game, which helped me push through the onslaught of simple puzzles that get thrown in front of you. But it's really the only level in the game that I wouldn't enjoy replaying because some parts can feel too much like a chore. There's enough variation with the obstacles surrounding the plug puzzles that it never felt like I was doing the exact same thing over and over. But the sheer amount of them seemed excessive, and the conveyor belt sequences also felt like they overstayed their welcome. I think that cutting down on the length of both of these would have made the level more enjoyable for me. I don't want to spoil the final boss fight against the Nyla, the Nyla, the giant baby thing, so I'll be brief here. It no longer teleports you away to random places like it did in Half-Life, and there's no more low gravity. Instead, you're locked in with it as it unleashes a bunch of devastating attacks that take full advantage of the game's graphical capabilities. It's a lot more straightforward than the Gonark fight, and it's a fun and satisfying final battle. Black Mesa was never intended to replace Half-Life, and it's definitely its own distinct game. But I do think it's totally fine to start with Black Mesa if you're new to the Half-Life series because it really does capture the essence of the original. Even if you disagree with some of the changes, I think one thing that most Half-Life fans can agree on is that the amount of passion and effort that went into making Black Mesa is highly impressive. Yeah, it did take a long time to finish, however when you consider that it was developed by fans and not some big budget studio, the fact that a game of this quality got finished at all is pretty remarkable. If you're hungry for more, there are mods in the Steam Workshop you can check out like the remake of Blue Shift. It's not finished yet as of the date of this video, but you can play the first four chapters. Or if you're feeling really nuts, you can go after some of Black Mesa's crazy achievements, like the ones where you have to carry a pizza or a purple Dr. Seuss hat with you throughout most of the game. I don't have any thoughts to share on the multiplayer because the server seemed pretty dead. If you're a Half-Life fan, then you've probably played Black Mesa by now. And if you haven't, well, I think you're missing out. But you don't already have to be a fan of Half-Life to enjoy it.